One of the most common questions we get here at National History Day is this. If a student finds a primary source that's embedded in a secondary source, should it be listed as primary or secondary in the annotated bibliography? Now, like most questions that have to do to, with rules, we encourage all of our students to go check out the NHD Contest Rulebook. You can get it at nhd.org slash rulebook and you want to double check that you have the one that has the teal border. That's the one that was updated in 2020, which goes into effect for the 2021 contest season and will be in effect moving forward. Now, when I read my NHD contest rulebook, I can see in the NHD rulebook on page 11, the distinction. If a student finds a primary source inside of a secondary source, that's okay. But the key is that it's important that they cite that source as a secondary source, that they cite the book that it came out of. Now, in that student's annotation, it's totally okay to explain that in this book, they found a letter, they found a photograph, they found other potential primary sources. However, we're gonna encourage students to trace these back to find the full primary source. So the full text of the letter or the speech, the original photograph or lithograph or painting. And why do we do this? We wanna make sure that students see the whole picture. So not just an excerpt of a presidential speech, but the entire speech. Not just part of a painting, but the entire painting. Now, to do that involves a little bit of detective work. So let's talk about some strategies to help you do that. First off, we're gonna start with a primary source that we found in a secondary source. So I'm gonna assume that for my History Day project, I'm looking at the history of the temperance movement. And I'm reading my textbook and I find this really interesting image. And I think, ooh, this is an interesting primary source. I could do some good analysis on this one. But I know it's in a textbook and I know that textbooks are secondary sources. So what am I gonna do here? First thing, I'm gonna go ahead and take a note of a couple key things. I know this is in this book on page 350. I noticed the woman in the red dress that caught my eye. Hold on, we'll come back to that. And the caption tells me that this image was produced by Kellogg and Comstock in the time period 1848 to 1850. Okay, so what do I do with that? The first thing I wanna try is to check the image credits in the book. So I go to the back and I flip through and I find that the image on page 350 was a gift of Mrs. Samuel St. John Morgan at the Connecticut Historical Society. Well, that's great if I live in Connecticut, but what if I live in Alaska or Arizona or Texas or China? This isn't gonna be really helpful for me, right? So we've gotta try some other ways to see if we can get to that original primary source or see if it exists anywhere else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try a reverse image search. Since this image is in a book, I'm gonna simply take a picture of it. I can use my cell phone or the camera on my computer. And I'm gonna to go to Google Images and notice that little camera button on the right-hand side. I'm gonna click that and it's going to give me the option. Here I can either paste the URL of where I found the image if I found it online, or since I've got a copy of the image, I'm gonna click the Upload tab and upload it from my computer. Then I click Search by Image and let's see what comes back. When I did this, I actually found not only are there lots of images for these banners, but the first hit comes up from the American History Museum at the Smithsonian Institution. That National Museum of American History, I know that's a good place to go. So let's click on that and see what they have. Oh, look, we've got a temperance banner. We've got a woman in a red dress. Uh, we can see that this was published by Kellogg's and Comstock around 1850 and it's part of the Museum of American History. We've got more metadata on it and I can download it and now I've got a primary source. But I'm kind of interested because I know that there's other sources as well. And I know that from doing my research with my secondary source, a lot of the historians and authors are talking about finding information on the temperance movement at the Library of Congress. Well, their website is loc.gov. So I'm gonna do a smart search on Google. I'm gonna use the keyword temperance banner, but then I'm gonna limit it. I'm gonna tell Google, hey, I only want responses from the website loc.gov. So I do that by saying site, S-I-T-E colon, 
loc.gov. So just looking for that. What happens when I do that? Ooh, when I do that, I've got a whole bunch of different temperance banner images. I've got different kinds of resources. I've got prints. I've got what look like physical banners. If I look down, the fourth hit is for Chronicling America. That's newspaper articles. Ooh, there's some really good sites here. And you know, I want to dig through some of these, but I don't want to just limit it to what Google's going to tag for me. I actually want to go to the Library of Congress's website at loc.gov. In the upper right hand corner, I have a search bar. So I'm going to use my keyword and I'm going to limit to the division. I don't want to see temperance banners in the maps division or the music division. I want to look in photos, prints and drawings because that's what I'm looking for for my project. When I do that, what I find is a source. Ooh, this is kind of interesting. This doesn't have a woman in a red dress, but instead like a bluish purplish dress. Well, let's look at these images side by side for a second. On the left is the image from the textbook and on the right is the image I found at the Library of Congress. While they're definitely not the same image, they're from different sources, they're right about the same time and they're awfully similar. Hmm. This gives me some good history food for thought to think about why these images exist, why they're so similar, what are the messages they're trying to portray, and how are they trying to persuade people to either support or oppose the temperance movement. Now I've got to use my primary source analysis skills. Good luck, happy searching, and remember, whenever you can, you want to trace those primary sources that we find in secondary sources back to the original primary sources. Happy researching.